Hi, I'm Bill Corcoran Jr., and I'm your host for the On The Stacks podcast. Today, I'm chatting with Kelly Rava, founder of Empowerment Education. Welcome back, podcast, episode 11 of the virtual On The Stacks podcast. Kelly, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you today? I'm, uh, I'm all right. You know, another, another virtual On The Stacks podcast, you know, obviously with uh, COVID-19, we're, we're all home, and uh, it's a little bit different, but, uh, you know, we're making do. Yes, here we are. Yeah, so so thanks for joining me today. Uh, I, I I'm I'm really excited to to hear your story. I know some of your story, mm-hmm. um, but uh, now's going to be a good time to really learn a little bit more about you and uh, uh, and empowerment education. So, but before we get into the story of empowerment education, uh, tell me a little bit more about yourself and your background. You have some interesting experiences all over the world, all over the country. So, yes. tell me a little I bit do. about that. Well. I'm- I'm born and raised here in Northeast Pennsylvania, and after graduating from Wilkes University, I went to grad school for clinical social work at Marywood. And during that time, I spent a semester studying in England. And what I did there was I worked with a very poor, I mean, I mean I'm talking poverty stricken, living in tents, living on the streets, um, children that were physically or sexually abused, you know, during that time. And um, after I spent a summer there, and then after that, I was able to tour Europe. I spent a month touring Europe and, you know, seeing other areas and seeing different countries. It was, it was a great experience. And it was definitely an excellent experience. The this, this semester I spent out there with the kids was definitely eye-opening. Yes. Yeah, so what was the, um, uh, the foundation? I think I read uh, on your website, uh, you worked for the foundation. Stephanie Children's Fund. So it was founded by um, Bob LaValent, and he was a foster child. Okay. You know, and he just got involved as an educator and, you know, saw a need for social workers for these kids and then just invited, um, you know, students from the United States over, you know, myself and a few others went to help them with their camp. So what it was, was a day camp for these kids. And we did a lot of activities of um, power building, team building, you know, trying to make them more resilient to adversity. So it was definitely a great experience. It helped the kids a lot. So that's kind of really where you got your first start in 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 this field. Yes, that, that's great. Yes. I'm sure that was some some valuable experience for sure. Absolutely. And uh, plus, you got to see uh, uh, quite a bit of Europe, which I'm I'm yes. sure I'm a little jealous of. I've never been myself. Oh, fantastic! Absolutely, yeah. I will say another great experience. Definitely. Yeah. Now is not the time to go, but uh, you know, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but no. uh, hopefully when things clear up, uh, you know, maybe one day I can get myself over there. There you um, go. So after after London, um, you you moved back to the U.S. But did you did you move back uh, to Pennsylvania first or California? You were in California well, for a bit. You know, I just I'm very adventurous, and I was back maybe a few weeks after graduation. And um, my ex husband and I decided, you know what? Why not? We're young. We don't have kids. Let's move to Southern California. No idea really why we picked it. I love hot weather. I love the beach. So we lived there for eight years in uh, Southern California. We were probably less than 10 minutes from Laguna Beach. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was nice. That's nice. Yes. So, you, so you, uh, you, you taught there, right? You taught at a school there? I did. I actually, for the first two years, I was a social worker, which is where that's my, that's my degree is from. And then I decided to go back to school for education. You know, something oh, yeah. just clicked. I, you know, loved being a child therapist, but I also, you know, wanted to teach. You know, and be so you went, you went to school out in California? I went to school in La, Jo- La Jolla, California, down by San Diego. Mm-hmm. Okay, very cool. What year was this? That was in, oh boy, 2010, 2011. Okay. Yeah. So, so you lived there for about eight years or so. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and then you made the jump back to NEPA. I did. Yeah. I did. You know, and why we did that, I, I love California. I do miss it. I miss the weather. Um, I miss, you know, the friends that I've made who become still to this day are like my family, but nothing could compete with Northeast Pennsylvania. To be honest with you, you know, my family is very important to me. They live here. My parents, I wanted my kids to grow up with them. You know, I was very happy with the school districts out here as well. And just really, I I miss the area, you know, coming, it wasn't the same, even though I came out several times a year back home, it was never the same. You know, California is a different place and I just very happy I made the decision. Definitely the right decision. So you moved, you moved, you moved back to NEPA in what, 2011 ish? Was it? Yes. Yes. 2011. Yes. So what yep. did you do? What did you do when you first moved back uh, to the area here? What, what did you? Well, I had my third child not long after I moved back 
and I took some time off of work and then I decided to go back to being a therapist. Um, I was a mobile therapist and a behavior specialist consultant and I worked at Scran Counseling Center for several years until we lost funding, you know, as some of these counseling centers do. Okay. Um, and then at that time, I was also doing a uh, part-time monogramming and embroidery business, which eventually became my full-time job. Yeah, you know, I want to I want to ask you a little bit about that too. So, uh, you know, before we started, I, I I wasn't sure. You know, I've known you for some time now, but I wasn't really sure if 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 that really became your full-time business. And and I guess it did. So, do you want to touch a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, it started off. People will ask me how I got. You know, how I went from a therapist to a teacher to embroidering. And I was, I mean, it's kind of a crazy story. When my daughter was a baby, I used to like to make hair bows for her. And I would go in, I, I was off in the summer, during the summer. So I'd go into different boutiques in Los Angeles and Newport Beach. And they saw the bows and they started buying them from me. Hmm. So for their boutiques. And so when I came back here, I decided, well, let me embroider her name, Alexandra. So I'd embroider her name on bows. People started asking me about them. And then one thing, it became, you know, doing um, hair bows to maybe putting a name on a shirt, to putting logos on, then hats and then tote bags and purses and just one thing, it just kind of spiraled and you know, that's, that's how it became. Wow, that's very interesting, really cool. Um, so uh, also kind of all at the same time, I, I think, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but you, uh, you, know, you founded this, this nonprofit, Empowerment Education. So you know, that's why we're really here today you know, to talk a little bit about that, raise some awareness, uh, you know, learn your story, tell people, you know, how they can benefit from it. But first, let's let's start with, you know, why did you start Empowerment Education? Well, you know, I felt there was a need for, there's so many great nonprofits out there for mental health education. And there's really none specifically for empowerment and bullying prevention. So that was something that, um, has a, I don't want to say a special place in my heart, but it's something that has, and bullying has impacted me in my life. Um, and I just felt there was a need for it and I wanted to do something to help people. So if you don't mind me asking, like, what's your, what was your, what was your experience? I, you know, I, I, I think I kind of know the answer, but I know probably half of it. Um, but you know, can you, do you want to touch on that a little bit and tell, you know, tell our listeners, you know, your experience with bullying and, and, you know, how you were able to turn that into uh, this great nonprofit that you run now? Absolutely. And, you know, I was in middle school and, you know, I'm 45 years old and I was 12 year old. It was 1987. And I remember it like it was yesterday. I mean, it had a huge impact in my life where I was severe, severely bullied, you know, to the point that my parents had to actually change schools for me. Wow. They had to, yeah, it was, it was really bad. You know, um, girls could be cruel and they were certainly cruel and it just, it did. It took a toll on me emotionally. And, um, you know, now I look back and I'm thankful for it because it made me the person who I am today. And I would have never started a foundation if I didn't have the experiences that I did have. That's really great. So you're able to take that, take that negative um, <clears throat> experience and, and really turn it into a positive, uh, you know, start this nonprofit, you know, to help kids, you know, that went through the mm -hmm. same thing that you went through as, you know, as a, as a you know, young teenager. So um, what, what exactly does empowerment education do? Take me through it. Okay, so what we do is we go into schools, libraries, or other community um, places, and we offer presentations. And what these presentations consist of, they last about anywhere from, let's say, 50 minutes to a little bit over an hour, you know, depending on if you get a lot of questions asked. And we talk about empowerment, you know, what is empowerment? How can we be more empowered? You know, self-esteem. What is self-esteem? What can we do to increase our self-esteem? We talk about, you know, self-confidence how you can become more confident, resiliency, how are you more resilient to adversity in difficult times? And then we go on and we talk about bullying prevention. So we have been, um, we have done over, gosh, well, actually, I think we're almost at 50 presentations since we, the foundation began in late 2018. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's, so it's still fairly new, but yes. it seems like you've, uh, you've already made quite an impact, um, you know, teaching. So, so what do you do? Do you go to uh, middle schools, grade schools, high school? You know, you our focus about? is because one out of three middle school age students experience bullying. That, that is basically our main focus, fifth to eighth grade. Okay. Now we have done presentations for high school as requested. And also we've been invited to libraries and um, parents nights. I've been to a PTA, PTA groups 
Um, and we kind of, you know, also, you know, let me jump in and just say we could customize it to what they need. So if a school calls me and says, hey, Kelly, you know, this is what we're going through. You know, there's a lot of cattiness with girls. And that, you know, that is one thing that I, I, I will get, you know, a lot of the, you know, the eye rolls, the talking about people behind their back. Now it's not necessarily bullying, but it definitely leads to, it can lead to bullying. Okay. But we can also customize these presentations. That's great. Um, so, uh, you know, who, uh, who, you know, I think we kind of already answered the question, but who else can benefit from from this, I mean, is there is there any anyone else besides schools? Like, is there anything else that you know that that people or people can be benefit you know benefit from what you know what you offer? Well, we have libraries, you know, libraries, you know, teen groups. That's a huge thing. Youth groups. Um, who else? Uh, well, any any type of youth group. Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. You know, any type of community group um, can. Like I said, you know, we can customize it to exactly what they need or what they're looking for. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Um, also, so you have, you have, you said you have three kids, right? I do. How old are, how old are the kids? Soon to be, um, my youngest is soon to be 13. So 13, 14, and 15. Oh, wow. You got your hands full. Yeah. <laughs> I um, do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Definitely I'm do. Sure, I'm sure they're uh, keeping you busy now at home, right? You know, it's a struggle, <laughs> you know, with them having, you know, three different grades, having them to do their schoolwork. It's definitely, um, definitely a struggle for me trying to work from home, you know, and them saying, mom, can you help me with math? And I look at them like, no, <laughs> I have no idea how to help you with math. <laughs> no clue. <laughs> yeah. I'm the same way. I'm not, uh, I was never the best math student. Right. Yeah. Me so, either. um, so, but you're, you know, you're, you're working from home and, uh, one other thing I, I, I think I saw it on Facebook, um, with your, with your embroidery business, you also, um, I, I, you know, I'm sure you've probably been impacted, you know, you know, negatively because of the whole coronavirus. And, uh, you know, I, I think I saw you were, you were making, uh, masks on Facebook too. Yeah. What, uh, you know, how, how did that come about? Well, what had happened was, you know, I had this embroidery business and unfortunately lost it to like you know, most of us that have businesses are self-employed, lost a ton of business, you know, and it kind of just went downhill and I had nothing. And, um, you know, I decided to start making some face masks for friends who were firefighters and friends that were nurses and doctors and kind of one thing led to another. And I decided, you know, why don't I just start donating? You know, the kids could help me. My kids got really involved. They were cutting ribbon, elastic fabric, washing it, drying it, you know, so we got the whole family involved you know, and we donated well over 400, you know, from hospitals in Queens, you know, local places here, Geisinger, um, different areas here, first or um, first responders, nurses, doctors, truck drivers. I mean, we've, how did you, how did you find these people that, that were in need? Like, how did, uh, how did it come about? I mean, you mentioned truck drivers, something in Queens. Uh, yes. I mean, it, you know, it varies all over hospitals, obviously, but how did you, how did you find these people that, that needed your help? Basically, friends were just asking, you know, a truck driver friend says, hey, you know, I have to go into these, you know, the rest areas or I have to go in and drop a load off. Can I have some? Okay, well, then he needed some. Well, hey, can you make some for my friends? You know, it went like that. And then I have a friend who's a firefighter and they were just given some paper ones. And he said, I'd love to have a washable one. You know, and then some friends that, you know, are immune compromised, you know, they would ask me, hey, I have to go to the doctors. I'm really nervous. Okay, sure. You know, and I did, I was very lucky. Some people sent me donations that I was able to pay for pa for fabric for. So it wasn't all, you know, me, I was giving my time, mm -hmm. but um, people were generous and they, um, they, they helped as well. That's awesome. And, uh, and the, and the kids, the three kids pitched in yes, as well. They did. Yes. That's really cool. That's fun. I'm sure that uh, certainly helped pass, uh, pass some of the time at home. It did because they weren't in school at that time. They weren't, um, there was no online schooling like there is now. Oh, okay. So okay. I put them to work. Yes. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's, let's touch a little bit more on empowerment education. So, I mean, you know, how do you, you know, how do you guys, you know, get the word out? You know, how do you guys market? I'm sure it's, you know, it, it's tough as, as a nonprofit, you guys mm -hmm. probably have limited, you know, very limited budgets, I'm sure. So right. how do you, how do you do it? Well, what I started to do was I started calling schools, you know, that's kind of how it um, came to be is just calling schools. There was, there was something very specific and it was in um, September of 2018. It was our first presentation. There was um, a news article about a girl who committed suicide allegedly from bullying. 
and I reached out to them and said, look, I have this foundation, you know, we're just getting our, you know, our feet off the ground. Is this something you'd be interested in? Well, the next day I was there doing presentations for all grade levels and parents. So once that ball got rolling and the superintendent would call another superintendent, a principal, you know, once we got those testimonials and feedback, it kind of snowballed is really how it is. And then I just continued to, you know, contact teachers, you know, my teacher friends and, you know, said, hey, you know, take a look at this program. I'd love to be able to come out and educate your students. So one thing led to another with that. And then, you know, we've had, we've been in the newspaper a few times, articles on bullying prevention, and we've received calls from that. So it really it was really great. Yeah, I think I saw not long ago, you, had, you guys had like a big write-up in the Times later, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Mike, for doing that. That was Mike. Mike McGinley, right? Yes, absolutely. Big shout out to Mike McGinley and the yes. Times later. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. That's, that's really cool. Um, uh, so, you know, you know, what else uh, about empowerment education? I mean, how can, you know, is there, is there any way that, you know, people can get involved? Um, how can, how can people help you? Well, right now what we're doing, I mean, right now, obviously it's a difficult time. You know, we don't have, as of this moment, you know, many, many of our presentations were canceled because of COVID, you know, unfortunately, like, you know, the rest of everything was life was shut down. So once we get started again, we are on social media, we are on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we have a website, we're on LinkedIn. You know, people can see it when opportunities come when we, you know, we, I don't exactly know, honestly, right now when our next fundraiser will be, but that's a way for them to get involved because they are presentations. Um, I do like feedback though. I do want to start a group where parents can come, parents, kids, you know, anyone can come and say, hey, you know, I have this issue. What can you help me with? You know, what more, I want to know what, how I could better these presentations. I want their feedback. So that's pretty much how people can help, you know, when I start opening yeah. these, uh, these groups. Yeah. So, you know, with the coronavirus, I mean, you, you, you know, you just touched on it a little bit, but you know, obviously it's, it's impacted you negatively quite a bit because, you know, school's canceled. So, so are your, your right. presentations, right? Yes. Yeah. Several of them, you know, we had six, um, in one month plus two at a local library. So it really, it definitely really hurt us. And, you know, I don't know, you know, we don't know if we're going back to school in September. I mean, who knows, you yeah. know, we can't, you know, no idea. Well, I have a, I have a little idea for you. Oh, good. Tell so me. Now that you are a zoom pro. Yes. <laughs> this is Kelly's first zoom. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm glad I was able to show her the ropes and get her started. But now that all the all the kids in the schools are doing Zoom, maybe you know maybe there's an opportunity. Um, you know, if somebody hears this podcast or you you know after this podcast airs, you feel free to share this podcast. But you know, maybe some schools you know would be willing to uh, um, have you come on and do a Zoom uh, presentation. Uh, be, you know, and 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 you know present to present to some classes of kids uh, virtually. You know what? That is an excellent idea. I did not think of that, but now, like you said, that I'm a Zoom pro, that would be that'd be a great idea. And I do know a lot of teachers. Yeah, I mean, well, I have, you know, my yeah. brother's a principal. So um, this is a great idea. Yeah. So once this comes out, you forward this thing to everyone. <laughs> I will. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, no, I think I think it, it would be a great opportunity for, um, you know, with, you know, with all the kids at home doing Zoom class. Mm -hmm. They're all using Zoom, right? Your kids are using yes. Zoom. Oh, yeah. They know how to do it. Yep. Yeah. So um, I think it would be a good opportunity for you to, uh, you know, maybe get in touch with some schools and see if they could, uh, you know, offer you know, some, you know, one of your seminars uh, through Zoom. I think it's a great idea. That excellent idea. <laughs> yes. Good. Thank well, you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, at, before we, before we wrap it up, I mean, I want to, you know, you know, how else, how can someone get in touch with you in the meantime? Like what, what, what do people need to do? Well, we have our website, which is taking control of you.com. You know, they can get in contact um, through that. We're on social media. So we are on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. They can call me directly. My number's up on everything. And I can just shout that out, which is area code 570-299-9471. Anyone can call me, hit me up. You know, talk, I can talk to them more about the presentations and see what their needs are. Well, but I'm know, really uh, excited about this Zoom thing. You got me, you yeah. got my, you got Good. me rolling here. Well, I'm glad. You know, we, we, you know, we both learned something today. I learned a little bit yeah. more about you and, and, and the, the, you know, your nonprofit and uh, hopefully you're going to take this uh, Zoom thing to the next level for, uh, for your foundation. Um, you know, actually, one or two other things I think I forgot to ask was, um, 
do you have any like any great any good success stories you know after giving a presentation you know has has there been a, a kid that came up to you you know on the side or privately or a parent that maybe reached out and thanked you or something do you have any do you have any good story that you can share like a good success you know, story we i'm very thankful because you know we do have a lot i don't you know want to go into specifics about sure. you know students but I will say, you know, on an average presentation, there's three to four students who come up to me after. Wow. You know, and, they do, and they will say, you know, you've made an impact. You know, thank you. I've been bullied. I get it. Thank you for sharing your story. Because I was hesitant at first, you know, sharing my story, sharing some details of my bullying. You know, it led to some, you know, some depression, some very bad self-esteem issues, self-confidence. But, you know, and I always tell them, you know, I'm resilient. Look, look where I am now from where I am then you can get there too. So, I mean, it, it's, it's great to hear these stories. And then, you know, one person did, okay, here, here's a great story. And I'm, you know, I'm glad you touched on this. Good. I had a student email me, you know, and tell me that it was a great presentation and that it really impacted her life. So that was, uh, that was it. She was bullied for many years for being unique, you know, as she described. And um, she said it just helped her. So that was really good to hear, you know, that we are making a difference. You know, we do have, you know, on our website, we do have testimonials posted there from superintendent, superintendent, principals, teachers, parents, and students. So people can take a look at those. But um, it feels good helping people. That's great. <clears throat> um, and I think one other one other question I had, uh, we touched on it a little bit, I think, in the beginning of the podcast. Um, and it's a it's a question that has been uh, kind of common on the podcast. Um, and uh, a lot of listeners keep telling me, like, Bill, that's a great question keep asking it. We, we'd like to hear people's answers. So what it's, it's a real easy one. It's not a trick question. Okay, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> I know I, I saw your face there and I'm like, oh, she's, <laughs> no, it's super easy. Um, what, uh, so you, you came back to NEPA, right? You moved back, mm -hmm. you were, you were, you were in London, you're in California for a number of years and you, you came back to NEPA. So, um, a little bit of why did you come back to NEPA? You touched on a little bit earlier, but what's your favorite thing about NEPA? Spring and fall. Love it. Now I would do miss the California summers, but spring and fall are really beautiful here. And the people, you know, there, there's good, you know, good, kind people, very family oriented people, some great areas around here, um, great restaurants, you know, um, I just, I enjoy Northeast Pennsylvania. I'm really happy to live here and um, I'm glad I came back. Yeah, no, it's a great answer. And um, I, 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 I was wondering if you were going to say pizza, because oh wait a second you know what i'm surprised i didn't say pizza yes because you in california there is no such thing as sicilian pizza. there is no such thing like it is foreign to them you know and in california most places are chains you don't see mom and pop restaurants that's where i prefer to go here okay. you know you definitely don't see that but pizza yes yeah. pizza. i actually have a, a, um, a story of my parents sending out fedex four trays of, of um, half-baked, it was Gigerelli's when they were open in Old Forge, of their half-baked pizza. They FedEx it overnight. Wow. It, it cost, it cost them, oh, I want to say well over a hundred dollars to get this pizza to me. But listen to what happened. The pizza uh -oh. got lost. No. I didn't, you can't even make this up. I didn't get the pizza for days. Oh no. Yes. So it was no yeah. good then, I guess, right? No, it was not. <laughs> uh, not from California weather, even though it was cool. It wasn't, it wasn't good after a couple of days, but yes, pizza. Yeah. I miss their yeah. pizza. Yeah. So one of the, you know, uh, uh, two, two of the, the most popular answers, I think number one is pizza of, of, you know, mm -hmm. the answer to this question. Number one is the pizza and number two is the people, which, you know, you touched yeah. on the people. Um, but those are, those are two of the uh, most popular answers of, uh, of, you know, what's the, the best thing about any PA, but yeah, we definitely, um, I definitely, you know, got to, you know, give a shout out to all the people uh, here in NEPA because yes. it's, you know, all these people, people like you, um, you know, really, really make our, our community, all these small businesses. And, you know, we all need to support each other during these times. Well, thank you. And thank you for what you do and helping, you know, spread the word about empowerment education. I greatly appreciate this. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to have you on, happy to spread the word. Hopefully after this, you're going to like, be zoom famous yes uh, <laughs> you'll be seeing me on youtube with all my zooming yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll be giving you'll be giving me tips you're gonna be reporting back to me you report back next it. week um you know with your uh, progress updates i will i absolutely will yeah definitely um, 
No, that's great. So, but, but is, so what, is that your favorite pizza place, by the way? Um, Digit Rally's was, I love Ravello's, uh -huh. um, Salerno's, just give me pizza, Ernie G's, pizza loving. Now, now you're making me think, just give me <laughs> Pennsylvania pizza. Yeah. I like Angelo's sweet sauce. Mm, okay. One of my, okay. one of my favorites. Your favorites. Yeah. Maybe I'll have them on the podcast at some point. So there you go. <laughs> hopefully, you know, just only because I just want to get a piece of eat a piece of pizza on the stacks, obviously. Right. All right, uh, absolutely. But uh, you know, once once the uh, social distancing ban lifts, yes. hopefully I can get uh, Angelo's or you know some other great pizza. There's tons. I mean, there there really is no bad pizza in this area. I mean, no, I would agree with you on that. There isn't a, such thing as a bad pizza in Northeast Pennsylvania. Yeah, I don't I don't think there is. I really don't. Um, mm. I'm a pretty honest person, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you like your pizza, so. And uh, yeah, who doesn't? Right. You know. So. All right. Well, um, I think we're gonna we're gonna you know call it a night here. Uh, Kelly, thank you for for joining me on another virtual on the stacks podcast empowerment education. Thanks for joining me. Well, thank you for having me. If you'd like to learn more about the On The Stacks podcast, be sure to search the hashtag On The Stacks on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave a review. We'll catch you next time on The Stacks.